Hello third grade. Today is Thursday and we're going to be in our big book today reading our next story. So we're on page 98. You can see it down here, page 98. Today we're going to read about another landmark. We've got an expository text. It says read about a landmark street in Los Angeles, California that celebrates Mexican American culture. A landmark street. <laughs> Olvera Street is the birthplace of Los Angeles. It started with a small group of settlers from Mexico. So think about that. Los Angeles is now a huge, huge city, one of the biggest in the United States. And it all started with just a small group of settlers that had come from Mexico. That was over 200 years ago. Since then, Los Angeles has grown into a great city. And this city remembers its past. Olvera Street is part of the El Pueblo de Los Angeles monument. This place keeps history alive. Old buildings and museums on Olvera Street show visitors about its Mexican past. One of these is the Avila Adobe. It was built in 1818. It is the city's oldest building. It shows how people in California lived back then. Families visit Olvera Street to learn about, about California history. They also enjoy the famous outdoor market Musicians play cheerful Mexican and Spanish music. Folk, stand, folk dancers whirl in colorful costumes. Everybody has a good time on Olvera Street. And they learn about the past, too. Now, here's one of those sidebars in an expository text that just teaches us a little bit more. It says places to visit. Olvera Street is just one of many landmarks and monuments in the United States. Here is a look at some others. What do you think you can learn from each one? So we've got a couple of different places. One, the Statue of Liberty. Now you're also going to be learning about this in social studies. The Statue of Liberty is in New York City, New York. It was created in 1886 and it's important because the statue is a symbol of freedom and liberty. France gave it to the United States as a gift of friendship. It stands in New York City Harbor. We also have the John F. Kennedy Space Center. That's in Cape Canaveral, Florida. It was created in, in 1965, and it's important because the first men to walk on the moon blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in 1969. Since then, NASA has launched 135 missions from here. Then we have our Great Smoky Mountains. That's in Tennessee and North Carolina. It was created in 1934. Now, the Great Smoky Mountains were around before then, but it was created as a national park in 1934. The park is one of the last large hardwood forests in the country. It's a safe place for many animals. There are about 1,500 black bears in the park today. Then we've got Martin Luther King Jr. National Memorial. Its location is in Washington, D.C. Date created, it was in 2011. So this is a relatively new memorial. It's only nine years old. The Martin Luther King Jr. Sorry, Martin Luther King Jr. wanted all people to have the same rights. He inspired people to fight for the, for the rights of African Americans. Now, when we look at our, our um, Thursday worksheet, it looks like this, a landmark street. Make sure you get your name on the top. And we've got two questions. First one is, what can you learn from visiting landmarks? Well, what we've learned this week is that landmarks Teach us about important things in history. All right, when you're done with this first one, let me get a little closer for you. When you're done with the first one, the second says, which monument would you like to visit most and why? So look at this sheet on our page. You've got a couple different options, right? This week we learned about um, the Grand Canyon. We learned about Mount Rushmore. We learned about a landmark street here. We learned about the Statue of Liberty, the Space Center, the MLK Memorial, and then the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. You can pick any of those, or if you know of a different one, you can pick that as well. Which monument would you like to visit the most and why? When you're done with this one, don't forget the why part. 
flip it over, we've got some more work on the back. For unit one, week five, you're going to go ahead and you're going to read this passage. It's all about the Anasazi. The Anasazi are the ancestors of the Pueblo Native Americans. Between the 11th and 14th centuries, they built cliff houses into the sides of cliffs through what is now the southwestern part of the United States. The most famous of these cliff houses are in Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. These cliff houses fascinate archaeologists, people who study human history. These scientists have learned a lot about the Anasazi and the cliff houses. The Anasazi were farmers who planted crops in the valleys below their houses. Since they stayed in one place, they made permanent settlements out of stone. The cliff houses varied in size from small buildings to store crops to entire villages of more than 150 rooms. By building into the sides of cliffs, they had protection from attacks by enemy tribes. They could remove the ropes and ladders that led to their homes to protect themselves. Archaeologists continue to study cliff houses to learn more about these ancient people. Now this worksheet is how you're going to prove to me that you um, are understanding our reading strategies for this week. So a lot of this you're going to do by yourself. Remember, you can reread everything up at the top to help you. So one, how do you know that this passage is an expository text? Remember, we learned that expository texts are texts that help us to understand more about a topic. If you're not done, go ahead and pause it. Number two, says write a question that can be answered in this passage. Well, one of the one of the questions I was wondering was how big are cliff houses? Then my answer, what's the answer to the question you wrote number 2? Well, Cliff houses can be small buildings or entire villages. Next, it says, what is the main idea of this passage? What's the main idea? Remember, the main idea is the one main point that you want to take away from this passage. Number five, using context clues, what is the meaning of store as it's used in the second paragraph? And then number six, how do the cliff house houses help us understand the Anasazi? So what do you learn about the Anasazi from learning about cliff houses? When you are done, don't forget to tuck it in your Thursday folder and check it off of your weekly checklist.